Let's look at planetary motions as they appear in the sky from the Earth. I've taken a still of a simulation that I'm going to show you shortly. Across the bottom is the horizon with the cardinal directions marked south, southwest, and west. So this is a very wide angle view. Also, if, if you look at the time in the upper corner, we see it's the date is very far in the future in 2044, sometime in May. And the time at night for this point in the simulation is approximately 1040 p.m. local time. You also see Mars highlighted with the red, uh, the red targets, as well as its name. Uh, we also see an orange line that surrounds Mars. And that orange line is the path in the sky that Mars has taken or will take. And I'll show you this. So in this simulation, we're going to start very much before this, mar this time in May of 2044. And we're also going to start much later in the evening, or actually, if you consider it, far earlier in the morning. And at some point, I'm going to pull it back to late in the evening like this so we can see it. This way, we can see over the course of many, many, many days and weeks, how Mars changes its place in the sky with respect to the background stars. The grid is the equatorial grid, which is a, a coordinate system that's fixed with respect to the background stars. And the track that you see, that orange track, is the path that Mars took in the sky to get to this place. So now what we'll do is we'll look at this exact simulation and see what we get. Okay, so now I've booted up the simulation. We see it's approximately 540 in the morning, way back in October of 2043. So this simulation takes place over a very large period of time. And we see Mars is tracking out this point in its orbit uh, that makes that orange line. And there's the retrograde motion. That retrograde motion is when it stops going from west to east and starts going from east to west. You can see that the motion is towards the western horizon. And as time goes on, the retrograde motion halts and we're done. We're back to prograde motion. Just want to point out with a still from this clip the following things. Again, we have the horizon there. We've got the equatorial grid showing us a map of the background stars. We have the moon sitting over there, zipping through this entire simulation as we saw it. And then we have the orange trail. The orange trail has the faded part where it used to be, and the most recent part is where it's brightest, right? We see that, uh, oh, the tip of the tail is right by the planet Uranus. This is pretty cool. But that's where it was, say, many, many months ago. And it went along this track, prograde, meaning west towards east. And west towards east in this image is from right to left, because to the left of west is south, and further left would be east on this thing. So the prograde motion was earlier, and the retrograde motion is when it kind of turns around to the far left and makes a little curl at the top and goes back over the top. That is the retrograde motion, and then it curls back again to go prograde again. Of course, this is all due to the fact that both the Earth and Mars orbit the Sun. The Earth orbits the Sun closer than Mars. So we get the retrograde motion when the Earth is between Mars and the Sun and overtaking it. Because Earth goes faster around its orbit than Mars, it overtakes it and we get that retrograde motion. That is simply an effect of motion of the Earth effectively lapping Mars as we go around the Sun. This is the same for all the planets. Every planet experiences this, and now we're going to go look at that too. Let's first take a look at Mercury. Right now we're seeing Mercury going in that moment we just looked at it from east towards west. That is retrograde motion of Mercury. Notice that it is now turned around and it's starting in this as we go forward in time moving with respect to the background stars now west towards east. And to make it kind of a little bit easier to understand what we're doing, I'm actually toggling on and off both the atmosphere and the ground so you can see this. So one is like we're out in space and the others were on ground and trying to actually find Mercury. Finding Mercury in the sky 
is always difficult because it's always close to the sun. It's never much more than 28 degrees away from the sun in the sky, and it's probably best if it's going to be at greatest elongation in the morning, in the sunrise time, uh, that you want to do that in the fall, not the spring, and likewise you reverse that for, for uh, western elongations. But here we see once again, I think I'm going to spin it back in time, yeah, let's center it back up. As time goes on, it gets closer and closer to the sun as it's going in prograde motion. So now let's like spin it back all the way back to where it was going to start doing that retrograde motion. And now we go forward in time again from January 1st. And we can see that it's going from the east towards the west. That is its retrograde motion in the sky. And so this is with the ground turned off. That green line is, of course, the horizon. And the sun is below the horizon here. But if we turned on the atmosphere, it'd be very hard to see. And there's Mercury again going prograde again back towards west, towards east, in its prograde motion. It's always hard to find Mercury in the sky because it's so close. I've done it many times as, uh, with, uh, with my telescope, but it's kind of funny when people want to talk about, oh, I'm having a problem because Mercury is going retrograde. It's like most of those people probably have never even tried to find Mercury in the sky, much less know where to look for it. Now I'm going to look at Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Jupiter, all as seen from space, and tracing their orbits. Let's define what we're looking at here. The red oval that seems to be going around the sun, upon which Mercury seems to be traveling, is actually Mercury's orbit. If for some reason the, the orbit itself was demarked by some stuff in the sky, like it was a physical object, that is what we would see. It is an ellipse that is around the sun at a very great distance. And that is the path that Mercury truly travels on. If we were to look at the solar system from above, uh, straight down, we would see that Mercury is orbiting the sun in a counterclockwise manner on an ellipse. And that's what this red line denotes. The path marked ecliptic is the path that the sun takes in the sky over the course of the year, and that is actually the projection of the Earth's orbit around the sun projected out into space. And we're looking back at the sun, so it looks like the sun is orbiting us, but in fact, we are orbiting it. The orange line that trails a planet, one of any of the planets we're looking at, is the path in the sky that the planet apparently takes with respect to the background stars. Sometimes that path is what we will call prograde, meaning going west from east. The dominant motion of all planets is prograde. The sun only marches prograde west to east. And occasionally, occasionally, a planet will march retrograde meaning east to west. When it does so, it will make a backwards loop or edge or curl or something that is an eastward bound motion. The types of planets we're looking at, there are two kinds. We'll call them inferior planets and superior planets. That doesn't mean one planet is better than another planet. What it simply means is that if they are interior to Earth's orbit around the Sun, then they're called inferior, and those are Mercury and Venus. The superior planets are Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, etc., which are exterior to, which have orbital radii that are greater than Earth's radius. Once again, inferior is smaller orbital radius than Earth's, superior is greater than. Therefore, when we get retrograde motions for, say, Mars, Mars's retrograde motion when it happens at opposition. At opposition, it is at the exact opposite place in the sky from the sun. For inferior planets, uh, retrograde motion is at, is at conjunction, or inferior conjunction, meaning Mercury or Venus is between the Earth and the sun, and that's when we get that particular kind of um, retrograde motion.
The blue grid is the equatorial grid of right ascension and declination. That is one of the ways that we man uh, have a fixed grid of coordinates with respect to the background sky. That is the coordinate system of the stars. The sun and the planets all move with respect to that. And you'll also notice that the orbits tend to go up and down and wag back and forth, and these tilts happen. That's because we're looking at it from an equatorial coordinate system. The equatorial coordinate system has as its north celestial pole straight up from the Earth's north pole. That does not correspond to the Earth's orbital axis. If it did, then this red line that we see here, or the ecliptic, would be flat with respect to the, or at least flat with respect to the uh, celestial grid coordinates that we see in the background. But the Earth's uh, rotational axis is tilted 23 and a half degrees with respect to its orbital inclination. Therefore, that grid, and that's where we get this tilt back and forth, it kind of looks wobbly. The moon is also making an appearance consistently through this entire simulation as it scoots across the sky once a month. And so it's a bit of a bother because there it goes, because we're trying to actually look at the planets. But if we were considering it from ancient times, the moon was considered one of the classical planets. It always goes prograde, just like the sun. It does not do retrograde motion. Remember, retrograde motion is due to the fact that all the other planets orbit the sun. Some orbit nearer to the sun, and some orbit farther from the sun. So let's summarize how these motions occur. As Mercury, Mars, and Earth go around the sun, when Mercury is between the elongations going through inferior conjunction, then we will get retrograde motion of Mercury. And when we have Mars going from between the quadratures through opposition, then we get retrograde motion of Mars. Notice that this is seen from above, and if we were looking from above, we've generalized it to circles, we know they're ellipses because of Kepler's laws and so forth, but we're making this easier to see. When we look from above, they're orbiting in ellipses, or in this case circles, just to make it easier to see, and we get the fact that the reason that the retrograde motion occurs is because Earth is simply going slower than Mercury and faster than Mars in its orbit. Kepler's laws state that the farther something away is, the slower it's going in its orbit. And all this summarizes together to show that the retrograde motion is simply due to Mercury passing or lapping Earth or Earth lapping Mars. That's where it all arises from.